Well, here we go. This is now Lesson 11E. <clears throat> In the next preview assignment and in the next class, you will need to be able to calculate amplitude and period for a cyclic or cyclic model and label scatter plot models. To begin, amplitude and period of a cyclic model. The graph below is going to show the hair population and the lynx population over a certain period of time using a computer simulation. The graph of the hair population, which oscillates up and down, is an example of a cyclic model. The graph of the lynx population is also cyclic. I've mentioned for you to have a glossary or flashcards or Google Doc or something on which you can keep up with vocabulary words and processes, formulas, etc. Well, here go a couple more words to add to that list. One of them being in a cyclic model, the period is determined by the distance from the first peak to the second peak, or you can look at it as valley to valley. So if we consider this to be the first peak and this would be the second, the points or the where they are on the graph are approximately where I have drawn below. We are then going to look at amplitude. It is half of the vertical distance between a peak and a valley. So looking at question number one, it says determine the approximate period for the graph of the hair population. And the hair population is the blue line. And they are asking the approximate period. So to recap, a period is measured by the distance from the first peak to the second peak, or we can do it valley to valley. Well, I've already got our peaks marked, and so approximately, um, <laughs> we can call it about whatever we want to call it. I'm going to say 374 is this number here, and this number here, uh, 8, I don't know, 836, approximate to approximate. So grabbing calculator or just some quick subtraction, we'll even show some borrowing here. And we have about-ish 462. So in question number one, which is asking determine the approximate period for the graph of the hair population, the period is about 462. And it should be the same if we did an approximate number from here to here, it should still be about 462. Question number two asks, determine the approximate amplitude. So let's recap on amplitude. Amplitude is half of the vertical distance between a peak and a valley. So here is a peak's height. Very poorly drawn, but a peak's height is close to 180. Um, we'll call it 178 and a valley um, for well we'll just go ahead and say 56 it's about ish 56 so by subtracting we get a number but that is from the distance between a peak and a valley and our amplitude is supposed to be half of that so 122 divided by 2 is, so we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 61. And one way I like to look at amplitude is, if we think it's 61, then if we're down here to about 50 something and we're going to go up to right around here, so somewhere in this neighborhood is going to be a distance that from here to a peak it's going to be about that 61, and here to a valley is going to be about that 61. The other part that we need to know for our next lesson is to identify appropriate models for given scatter plots. A large part of the mathematical process of modeling data is analyzing a scatter plot of the data and then making a prediction. You think that the model 
and then you'll list the model would be best the best fit for the shape of this data. We're going to have four of these to identify, starting with the directions on three. Determine the kind of model that might be the best fit for the following scatter plots. Choose from the following. You get to pick linear, exponential, logistic, cyclic, or a combination of these, or none of the above. If you happen to pick a combination or other, be specific. Specify what you think is going on. If you haven't already hit pause to do this lesson, this is a good time to hit pause. Go complete all parts of three and then come back and let's talk through them together. So starting with this first graph, our first scatter plot, if we connected the dots, they would do something like that. And so a guess on this would be exponential and um, quadratic. I know that's not even a list up there as an other because quadratic looks like this or like this. So it could be part of a quadratic, whatever you'd like to say, but realizing we do start slow and then we, as we've talked about earlier, increase at an increasing rate. Here's another scatter plot, and I like to play around by like drawing or drawing, but just playing around with what I think might be happening and even to look at the scenario. For the prices or the number sold, the price of the peach, peaches appears to be going down. So if I buy this many peaches, I'm going to be paying a much lesser price than if I just purchased whatever this is over here, amount of peaches. So I'm tending to say that this looks very linear, but then as I try to draw a little bit, it might be um, exponential or again, quadratic. Write down your thoughts. Again, we're just trying to make some predictions and talk more about linear, quadratic, logistic, and cyclic. Part C, another graph, another scatter plot. This is comparing months and the number of people and month one is January and that's the number of people on a subway platform and then month two would be February March April May must have been a pretty day that day <laughs> a lot of people are on the platform but when I look at this graph it looks like there is no pattern. It, I can't even try to draw a linear. I can't even try to draw a quadratic or exponential. And I know my other two choices are logistic, and logistic is going like this, but then there's cyclical. And so that could be cyclical, like maybe we're trying to do something like this, or maybe it's up. That one, my first one looked better. But it does look like there is a cycle that depending on the month is going to depend on like pretty months, cold months, and then we pick back up pretty months, cold months. So it appears cyclical may be the best fit for part C. Finally, part D has years of education women have versus ab average annual income and thousands of dollars for women. The first thing I want to try is linear, but I'm just, this part back here at the end is not looking linear and it's not looking exponential and we haven't used a logistic. So maybe, maybe the growth is slow to begin with and then the growth grows and then it slows down as they maybe reach a, a ceiling, a glass ceiling. <laughs> Either way, logistics seems to be applicable to this scatter plot. That ends our lesson 11E. If you have more lessons to do for this week's assignments, go ahead and do those lessons and make sure you do upload this to D2L.